Good morning and welcome to Eternal Faith this morning. If you'll stand and join with us as we begin our time of worship this morning. Take it in, that on the 
Eternal faith. It's good to see you all. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you, moms. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to uh, talk to you about Wednesday nights. We're still not to 100 yet, so I get to keep talking about it. <laughs> and that's what you missed last week. If you weren't here, that's what you missed. Here's what you're going to miss if you're not here this week. See, I know, see, we didn't get Doofenshmirtz last week in the lesson, but we're going to get him this week for you Phineas and Ferb fans. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. You got to come. You got to eat with us. You got to spend time, and we're going to look in, at, at God's word. We're talking about um, the ability to maneuver in this life. And so I want to encourage you to be here this Wednesday. Uh, like I said, eat with us. Fill out the, the card that you got in the, in the pew there that says you're going to eat with us so that we know how to prepare, how many people to prepare for. And then uh, make that commitment. Make that time commitment to show up and be here on Wednesday nights. Like I said, it's Mother's Day, though, and we want to celebrate moms. I got some... Uh, Friends that are going to come help me uh, pass out some Mother's Day treats. So if I could get my my kids my my kids to come right now, come on, don't be shy, don't don't wait for everybody else. There we go. You guys are awesome. Okay, so right here are those moms. Stand up. If you're a mom, stand up. We want to celebrate you. Woo! Yeah. All right, kids, if you'll just, ladies, stay standing up, and the kids are going to come by and, and give you a treat. So right there in, in that, those two baskets right here, just grab some and start passing them out. Go, go, go. We believe in you. Yeah, don't forget stage moms as well. <laughs> That's weird, but all right. Yeah, when you get your treat, go ahead and sit down so that uh, our kids will know where they're at and where they need to be. Oh, you guys are doing so good. All right. So happy Mother's Day to you. And we really do just are so, we thank you and are so appreciative of all that you do and all that, that you mean. And to my mom who will eventually watch this. Hi, mom. <laughs> my mom watches all our services and wants to join our church from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say things here, she often asks for updates on those things. <laughs> like she'll ask me how many people show up on Wednesday because, you know, I talk about Wednesday. So, so hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day.
Let's pray for, uh, for moms, and then we'll have our offering, and then we'll have our kids' time. But let's just take a minute to just lift up moms this morning. Father, we thank you so much. I, I thank you for my mom. I thank you for all that she's meant to me over the years. And I, I thank you for each mom here and for just how much their heart they put into just raising up generations. And God, we just are so appreciative and so thankful. And we ask that you would just give them a blessing and that, God, you would just uh, take care of them in a special way, God. Be glorified in their lives. Let them know your peace and your comfort and your care and your strength, God. All for your glory, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our men are going to come this morning for our offering. And this is our time to give back to God. It's a time financially. And I know that, you know, it is a, a, a thing that some churches don't do offering time during the service. We do, and here's why. Because we absolutely are convinced that this is much an act of worship as anything else we do. And we want to still keep that as part of an act of worship. We believe giving back to God is truly part of worshiping him. Murray, Field, lead us in prayer. God, our Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given us. We do thank you for our mothers and pray that blessing upon them this day. Lord, as we worship you this morning, we pray that you would speak to our hearts through the music, through the spoken word, Father, that we be drawn closer to you, dear Lord. May we not leave here the same person as we came. Father, we pray that all that we do would be honor and glorifying to you. Bless this offering, Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Brother Bill, come lead us in our children's time. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Eternal Faith Baptist Church. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Mom. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of you. If you're watching remotely, happy Mother's Day to you, ladies. And I hope we have some puppets. We do. They're starting to pop out. More importantly, young people, if you want to come up this morning, please feel free to do so. We do. We have some young people coming, and we have this morning, oh boy, we have a lot. We have, uh, wow, uh, we, have, we, uh, we have the owl, we have Hannah, we have Lucy, we have Grumpy, we have Sock, and Sock, I think you have one of our honored guests, of course. Uh, Sock, you have your, who? Uh, needs no introduction. Sock's mom, I believe. You're looking very beautiful with the, with the red lipstick. It looks very attractive, and uh, your hair is just I, I, great. That's the word. Thank you. I, yeah, great. Um, and I, I was trying to remember your name, uh, Miss so uh, Miss Bobby Sock. That's right. Uh, good to see you, and happy Mother's Day. I hope you get some cookies uh, out of that. And good morning to all of you guys. And it is Mother's Day. And wanted to talk about moms for just a second. And puppets, you guys feel free to chime in. Sock, how are you and your mom doing? Doing okay? Yep. Yeah. 
Very good. Lucy, have you talked to Sock's mom at all? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to her. Okay. Seems like a, a nice lady, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know what she you know what she taught Sock? I do not. And he's so happy for it. Is how to do laundry. Okay, learning to do chores. Okay, is that a good thing? Learning to do chores? Okay, you don't sound very convinced. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a bore, but we still have to do it anyway because it's for our own good. Okay, for our own good. Very good. That's what I wanted to ask you guys about this morning. What are some things that are really cool about mom and some really cool things that mom teaches us? Can you give me some examples? You going first? God loves us. Mom teaches you that God loves us. Excellent, excellent job. Any others? I have one. Yes, ma'am. And who was that? Was that Miss uh, Miss Hannah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my mom taught me how to bake great cookies. Making great cookies. Yeah, Loving that. Did. Loving that. Very good. Very good. Teaches you how to cook. What's something mom teaches you? And what's something really cool about mom? Her hair. Say again? Her hair. Her hair. Does your hair? Teaches you how to do your hair? Fantastic. My mom taught me how to do my hair as well. Mm, mine uh, too. Mine too. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't work with what my hair. hair. Yeah, thank you. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Excellent. So mom teaches us how to do our hair. Very good. What are some other cool things mom teaches us? I got something. Uh, okay, Grumpy, bring it on. My mom taught me how to be kind. To be kind, very good. Mm -hmm. That's a useful skill. Absolutely a good, useful skill. She's still teaching you how to be kind, too, I bet, right? No, I learned it. Oh, okay. Work in progress. Absolutely. How good well job. did you learn that, though? <laughs> oh, wait. Pretty well. Hold on. Excuse me, babe. Some of Miss Socks, Miss Bobby Socks' hair is Socks falling hair. off. Your, I guess, maybe that's... Could that be a wig? Oh, no. <laughs> She's know. been shedding all over yeah. the house. Very, but it's, you, you look amazing. That's looking really good. Moms, what's some other cool things about moms? What's some cool things that mom teaches us? Anything? We're going quiet. We're going quiet. Oh, no. You have one? You know you want to say it. How to sleep. How to sleep. How to sleep. As in mom gives you a bedtime, a specific <laughs> bedtime. Bed yes, how to go to bed yeah. on time. That's a better phrase. Okay, any others? Any others? I know. Yes, ma'am. How to make my bed. How to make your bed. Why are those things useful? They seem like a drag sometimes, don't they? But you said they're good for you. Why is it good for me to know how to make my bed? Because um, there are some things that in your life that you may need to do that, so you need to learn how to do it by yourself. Teaching responsibility, is that a thing? Yes. Yes, yes. absolutely right. Because as you get older, you're going to use those life skills. What was Jesus' mom's name again? Mary. Mary, thank you very much. Remember how Jesus, it, uh, we hear about Jesus' dad sometimes, but often in the Bible we will hear that Jesus' mom, Mary, treasured these things in her heart. I can promise you moms can remember a whole lot of cool stuff that we've done from when we're this big to when we're grown. Moms have a really great memory that way. Yeah, you know what, Bill? Yes, ma'am. Moms have eyes on the back of their head. Is that true, that moms have eyes in the back of their head? Yep. What, what does that mean, actually, Lucy? Well, she just sees everything you do, and that's just like Jesus. There we go. There we go. Always never get away with anything. Uh, you're never getting away with anything? Ever. Is that what you're getting at? It meant literal. Guys, that's an important thing. Moms have special intuition it seems like they seem to know when we're down or know when something's going on that we really need to talk about and that's a lot like God isn't it absolutely jump in so moms can give snuggles with you too give what snuggles 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 are fun that's a good thing and movies would it and movie night you can't beat that with popcorn yeah absolutely yeah. Does that feel a lot like how much God loves us? Yes. And it is, right? When you look at moms and dads too, but this is Mother's Day, and it's a picture of how God loves us. Think about how much moms love us. God loves us that much, and he says even more. That's a really good thing to be loved, isn't it? So take some time. Remember to thank mom for how amazing she is. Give her a big hug and a snuggle too. And think about 
how much you're loved, and let that remind you, too, about how much God loves you. Really cool deal. On three, everybody turn around and face that way. If mom's in the crowd, you'll see her. If mom's not in the crowd, maybe remotely. But on three, let's give a big thanks, mom, as loud as we can. Can we do it? Get puppets, are you with me on that? Yeah. Face yeah. that way. Just turn around that way. Miss Jordan, you do the three count because you're a good singer. Give us a three count, and then on three, we'll do a thanks, mom. That sounds like a plan? Ready? All right. One, two, three. Thanks, thanks mom. you, mom. Very good, very good. And in that same vein, let's thank God right now, right? Let's thank him for how much he loves us as well. I'll pray for us, and then you know what's after that. Let's talk to God right now. Miss Sock, Miss Bobby Sock, welcome. And puppets, thank you guys. More importantly, thank you young people for coming up. Father, we love you. Thank you for taking care of us. I thank you for my mom, God. Uh, I also thank you for Ian and Leah's mom and how incredibly cool and wise and smart they are, God, and that they want to serve you, Father. I thank you for the lessons that they teach. And I extend that, God, to all moms. You know them, and you love them and care for them, and you provide a human picture, too, God, of, of love. And it helps us to remember and draw uh, another picture of how much you love us and your son Jesus loves us, God. <clears throat> Thank you for these young people that are here this morning, Father, uh, and I thank you uh, for their knowledge of your word and obedience to you, God. I pray for them as they're about to wrap up the school year, God. Uh, some are testing this week, and I pray for uh, just a sense of confidence as they take their test, God, knowing that you're with them. I pray for their teachers that administer the tests also, Father, uh, for peace for them. And uh, as they get excited about the end of the school year, just ask you continue to keep them safe, God. We love you and praise you, Father. Somebody who's here doesn't know you, God, that they'd consider a relationship with you today. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Happy Mother's Day. And if you're in children's church, you're dismissed to the back. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to continue our time of worship this morning. If you'll stand and join us.
Hey! 
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 So you can turn to Judges chapter 4. And you know, when you think of Judges, probably the first name to come to mind is Samson. And then you probably next would come to Gideon. And unfortunately, maybe this one not so prominent and maybe we could spend a little time with Deborah this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day with a woman of bold faith, a woman who came along in a dark and difficult time and stood for the Lord. I want to read to you the first eight verses, and really we're going to kind of move through the whole fourth chapter. And then the fifth chapter is actually a song that she sings about the events. So we'll pull some of that in too this morning. But I want to read with you. Um, the Israelites again did what was evil on the side of the Lord after Ehud had died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his forces was Sisera, who lived at Heroseth, of the nations. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord because Jabin had 900 iron chariots and he harshly oppressed them 20 years. Deborah, a woman who was a prophetess and the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time. It was her custom to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her for judgment. She summoned Barak, son of Benom, from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, Hasn't the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, go deploy the troops on Mount Tabor and take, them, take with you 10,000 men from the Naphtalites and the Zebulonites? <laughs> then... I will lure Sisera, commander of Jabin's forces, his chariots, and his army at the Wadi Kishon to fight against you 
and I will hand him over to you. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Let's pray, and then let's look at that. Father, we ask that you would just enlighten us, enlighten us to understand what it means to be people of faith, what it means to stand in that faith, and what it means to follow you in faith. Just work in us right now, God, through your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. In 2006, in Quebec, there was a woman named Lydia with her two children outside. Some of the kids were playing hockey, and she happened to be there with her kids. And a polar bear showed up. And the polar bear, by the time she realized what was happening, had already zeroed in on her seven-year-old son. Big old 700-pound polar bear was coming after her kid. So she told all the other kids to run, and she went and got in between the 700-pound polar bear and her son. Now, this woman is 5 feet tall and 90 pounds. And she fought the bear. She was hitting it and kicking it, and the bear slapped her. And knocked her down, and then the bear got over, and she kept kicking the bear. You know, the bicycle, you know, when you're laying on your back and doing that bicycle kick, that's what she's doing to the bear. Bear hits her again, and she's rolling around. I mean, she is dueling this bear. And finally, uh, one of the townspeople got a gun and took four shots and, and put the bear down. But everybody in the town said, man, we never thought Lydia had something like this in her. And and they laugh because they go, man, she's real quiet. She's 90 pounds when she's soaking wet. And we just never thought we'd ever see this. She only had a few scratches and a black eye. That was it. And I, I thought, man, that is one tough mom. So it's Mother's Day 2022, and what do we need? What does this world need on a day like today? It needs the kind of toughness and grit and power that mothers bring to this world. Women like this Lydia who fights a bear. We need women of bold faith who will step up and be what they need to be for this world so that in every situation we can ultimately say, yes, that is the type of person of faith we can look up to. And that's exactly what we see this morning in this woman of faith named Deborah. As we look at this passage, we're going to see a woman of bold faith. What does that look like, though? What is that? And so that's what we have to unpack this morning, because we can't just say, hey, we need women to be faithful, and there you go. We need to say, well, what does that mean? What does that look like for a woman to be a woman of faith and stand up in our day to be the people God wants us to be? Here's the first thing. Bold faith obeys in the face of fear. We need a faith that will stand up in the face of fear. If you read the book of Judges, you can't help but get depressed. Don't, if you are already sad about the condition of human beings, don't read Judges. Because it will really, really make you sad about the condition of human beings. Well, in this situation, particularly in the book of Judges, you see that the people have, again, strayed away. And if you read Judges, you know that Judges is just one big circle of people disobeying God, people ending up in a bad situation because they disobeyed God, people crying out to God and God delivering them, and then people going right back into the same problem again. It's just a big circle. 
And God has given them the promised land. And what did they do? They adopted the beliefs and practices of the different uh, religions that were around them. And so God says continually over and over again in Judges, he says, all right, fine. You want to be like them? How about they will rule over you? And then the people cry out. They ask for God to help them. And when we get to Judges 4, society's in bad shape. The decay is great. The moral and spiritual level has gotten so bad that people are moving from the villages into walled cities just for safety. As a matter of fact, if you read chapter 5, it says the highways had become deserted because people didn't want to sell things and move around the, the country because it was so dangerous. This is the world in which they were living in And the Canaanites were constantly provoking and making life miserable for Israel. And at the beginning of Judges 4, it says that uh, they had followed other gods. And this is why. And the Canaanites had harshly oppressed them for 20 years. This is 20 years of this. This isn't like, oh, man, things got bad for a few months. This is like if you were born at the beginning of this, you knew nothing else but this oppression, nothing else but this bad situation. And in the midst of all that, Judges 5, 7 uh, says, well, all this was going on, all this was happening until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. And here's the thing is that if we're going to talk about faith, and we're going to talk about faith in the face of fear, it is going to have to be a faith that is in God and in God's word. Okay, so listen, Barak is is the, the military commander in Israel, and things are so bad at the time that he wasn't doing what God told him to do. Listen to verse 6 again. Deborah tells Barak, hasn't the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? She's like, hey, didn't God tell you to do this, to go fight? So why aren't we going? Because God had told him to deploy his troops on a certain mound to prepare for the fight. And not only was he called to fight, he was told what the result of the fight was going to be. Verse 7 says that God said, I will hand him over to you, Sisera, the leader of the Canaanite army, the military. He was going to be handed over to Barak if Barak would just do what God said. In other words, there was a chance for all this misery to end. And Barak wasn't doing it. And can I just say as an aside to the guys this morning, that we talk a lot about guys leading and then um, they don't do what God tells them to do. They don't do what God says. And you know what? When that happens, you should be called out. And this is exactly what Deborah does. Deborah calls out Barak, not because she believes in his military skill. She doesn't call out Barak because she believes in her own skill, even though the world tries to tell us, hey, you should believe in yourself. You should really uh, think that you can do it. You have to trust your own instincts, your own feelings, your own way of doing things. That's not Deborah. Deborah calls out Barak because she believes God. And that's what we need. We need a faith that believes God. Judges 4, 6 says, hasn't God commanded you? She knows what God said and she believes it. So it's time to act and the action isn't happening. Look, this is exactly what God calls us to do too. He calls us still all this uh, centuries later to believe To believe in what he said, to believe in what he's done, to believe in who he is. Over and over again, Jesus makes this very point. Mark 1.15, Jesus says, repent and believe the good news. Mark 5.36, Jesus says, don't be afraid, only believe. 
John 3, 15, Jesus says, anyone who believes has eternal life. John 6, 36, Jesus says, no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. John 12, 46, Jesus says, I've come as a light to the world. So everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. John 14, 1, Jesus says, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. You see, this isn't something that's a fringe thing for us. It is a central component to Christianity, to following God as far back as as Abraham in Genesis, where it says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. What's crazy is, do you know what Abraham believed? He believed that his descendants would be like the stars of the sky. That was it. I know that's not much, right? That shows you how much God wants belief. (laughs) God made a promise to Abraham. Abraham, your descendants will be like the stars of the sky. And Abraham said, I believe that. And God said, you're my guy. And And that's something, let that sink into you. That God wants to be believed. Jesus, over and over again, came at people who wouldn't believe. Over and over again, he kept saying, believe. So what does that mean? What does it mean to believe? It means you believe who Jesus is, the sinless one, Messiah, sent from God. What he did, he died and rose again. And what he said. We need that kind of faith. We need that kind of faith to be real and to be alive in our world today because, man, you know what's happened? Is we have become a nation of doubters. And we need a faith that crushes doubt. Because we live in a world that lifts up doubt. And as a matter of fact, I hear pastors, I hear teachers, I hear Christians, and they go, hey, doubt's a good thing. You should doubt. Really? Show me one time where Jesus said, good job doubting. No, really, show me. And I'll change my tune, and I'll get up here and say, I was wrong. Jesus never said, man, I applaud your doubt. What he always said was, why are you doubting? You have little faith. Why did you doubt? You know, he said that too, right? He said to Peter, who was sinking after he got out of the boat. He didn't say, good job, Peter. You at least got out of the boat. He said, why did you doubt? Here's the thing. We need people of faith. And the problem is that we have become people who embrace doubt. And it's no wonder so many people are anxious and depressed and and down on life. Because instead of pushing back on fears and living in faith, people embrace their doubts and things get worse. This is exactly where Barak is at. He doubts, and so he doesn't act, even though God has said, man, I will deliver you. I'll deliver Israel. 20 years of oppression can end today if you just do what I say. (laughs) And he says, I doubt it. (laughs) In fact, Deborah confronts Barak and what, happens 4 8 tells us that Barak responds like this if you go with me I'll go but if you don't go with me I will not go he has to lean on Deborah's faith (laughs) he can't he still can't do it isn't that amazing she's like poking him and saying come on you got to do this God said and he says "Uh, you know okay if you'll go I'll go 
Isn't that something? Life is terrible in the land. Change is right there if he will take it. And he would rather live in misery than live in faith. I find that that's not so unlike people who are full of yabuts. You know what yabuts are? I think you do. God says it really clear and you go, yeah, but what about this? And what about that? And what about the other? Well, Deborah's not impressed with his response. She's not impressed with Barak saying, okay, fine, but I'm not going by myself. No way. You got to go with me. This is what she says in verse 9. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor on the road you're about to take because the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. If you go on and read, you find that... that uh, Barak doesn't really get the victory over Sisera. What happens is uh, Sisera goes and hides out at this woman's place. And this woman, while he's sleeping, takes a, a tent peg and rams it into his head. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> we, need a, we need a faith that gets beyond fear gets beyond doubt, gets beyond that hesitancy, and instead says, well, hey, if God says it, man, I got to do it. Because we need a faith that lives out our beliefs. If you believe, you are going to live according to your belief. But the problem is, I think a lot of Christians say they believe and then don't live accordingly. So it's not unlike my brother. And I had this exchange recently with my brother who has decided he is going to change his eating habits dramatically. And, and so far, it's paid off quite well. He's, he's gotten a lot healthier, right? But one of the things that he does is he does everything in extreme, right? So he lost a tremendous amount of weight in a short period of time because he's an, ex an extreme kind of guy. And in his extreme way of doing things, he now claims he is a vegetarian. <laughs> this was an exchange we had recently. I said, you can't be a vegetarian, you eat meat. <laughs> to which he said, yes, but only for dinner. <laughs> To which, wait, to which I said, but you eat meat every day. <laughs> to which he said, only chicken. <laughs> <laughs> to which I said, chicken is a meat. <laughs> to which he said, and some fish. <laughs> and I said, again, fish is also a meat. To which he laughed and said, you don't understand the vegetarian life. <laughs> to which I laughed and said, you don't understand the vegetarian life. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't because it's, it's on the video and then somebody's going to get... Somebody's going to clue my brother in to the fact that I just gave this conversation. I don't need that. I think he was half joking at least, to be fair. But here's the thing. I think a lot of people do just that. They go, I'm a Christian. Well, Christians believe. And you say, I believe. Well, how do you live? I live how I want. Well, Christians live according to their belief in Christ. Well, I do that sometimes. 
at night <laughs> for dinner or whatever. You know, I mean, and it's just so phony that we say we believe, but then we don't ever put into practice what we claim to believe. And Barack here in the, the story knew God's word. He just didn't do it. It's not like Deborah was telling him something he didn't know. He wasn't like, oh, wow, I didn't know God had said we should do that. If I had known, I would have done this a long time ago. No, he said, I can't even go unless you go. And man, when we don't live according to our beliefs, it's time for us to be called out. Because here's the thing, we don't need more doubters. We don't need more fearful people. Those are a dime a dozen. Stands in the fight. Barak does what he's told to do. He assembles the army for battle, but so does Sisera and the commander of the Canaanite forces gets his guys together. And remember, verse 12 reminds us again, these guys have 900 iron chariots ready for battle. And this has been the source of their military strength for 20 years. And Judges 4, 3 says, yeah, 900 chariots harshly oppressed for 20 years because they just had military supremacy. Now, it's one thing to talk about the battle when you're sitting safely under a tree saying we should go to war. It is quite another thing to get out there and actually fight. And Deborah's right there. And in verse 14, she says, uh, she obviously, uh, apparently, Barak must have still been hesitant even at this point. Because in verse 14, she says, move on for this Is the day the Lord has handed Sisera over to you? Hasn't the Lord gone before you? Isn't God already in this fight? Your biggest struggles, your biggest battles, your biggest concerns aren't yours. They're his. And if you believe him for those things... What ends up happening is you can stand even when things go crazy. And by the way, they will go crazy. (laughs) And the question is, are you going to believe God when there is resistance, when there really is struggle? Are you going to believe God when there's 900 chariots ready to attack you? And... There are going to be times when life is going to be harder than you want it to be. And life is going to be harder than you want it to be because you're a person of faith, because you're stepping out. And there is going to be a fight that is bigger than you wanted, more difficult than you hoped. And maybe that fight's even going on right now for you. But when times are tough, we can't just talk a good game. We have to stand in the middle of that fight. And be strong in him, not in ourselves, but in him. Judges 531, when Deborah is singing the song about this whole incident, she says, may those who love him be like the rising sun in its strength. I like that. May those who love God be like the rising sun in its strength. We're coming on summer now. You know how the morning changes before the sun is up and after the sun is up, right? Pretty miserable, right? No, you, you guys like the 105 what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say if you like the 105 degree temperature. All right, how about Ephesians 6 says it this way? 
This is why you must take the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand, stand therefore. The fight is in our fight. It's God's fight and we're always called to stand in it. And sure enough, Barak leads his forces down to fight. And in verse 15, this is what it says. The Lord threw Sisera and all his charioteers and all the army into confusion with the sword before Barak. That doesn't even do justice to what happened. God delivers a complete victory. A complete and total victory. And that's the third thing you need to know is bold faith leads us to victory. In Judges 5, 9 through 11, where Deborah sings her song about this event, she said, My heart is with the leaders of Israel, with the volunteers of the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, who sit on saddle blankets, give praise. Let them tell the righteous acts of the Lord, the righteous deeds of his warriors in Israel. She knew where the victory came from. She knew it was God who gave Israel the victory, and that's the same for us. God gives us a victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God delivers people of faith. And get this. Are you ready for this? What is the result of this victory? The result of this victory, the last sentence of chapter 5 says, and the land was peaceful for 40 years. 20 years of oppression, 40 years of peace, and that one dividing line was one woman kicking Barak in the rear and saying, get with it and believe God and obey him. And it makes me wonder, what are you just one belief away from seeing a victory? What area of life are you just one belief, one moment where you say, I believe God for this. I believe that he is going to change things in my life because he is God. Because, man, I I have to think that so oftentimes we are just a handful of beliefs away from a different life. A handful of beliefs to say, wow, God said that? I'm going to do it. God said to be this way? I'm going to be that way. And I believe that he's going to give the victory. 1 John 5, 4 says it the same thing. He says, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So how do we find that victory? It's to live that life out of faith. And even when things are pushing against that, even when we say, oh, man, I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I know the one who does. And then you can sit back and say, well, look at how God pulled this off. Isn't he something or you could be a coward like Barak and go yeah I know what God said but God doesn't must not realize how many chariots they have You see, we're so stubborn. We're so stubborn and we say, man, I, I think I know best in this situation. And yeah, God, the creator of the world, doesn't get it, right? <laughs> Come on. The one who created everything, the one who created you, the one who already knew all your circumstances suddenly doesn't understand how life really works. Is that is that what you're going to go with? 
Or are you going to be like Deborah and say, didn't God say to do this? Why aren't we doing it? Ladies, what's your fight this morning? Maybe you came in this morning and life has come at you like a bear. And suddenly you're facing real danger. And you go, I don't know what to do. Maybe you came with really not much faith in your situation and not much belief that it could ever turn around. Maybe, you, maybe you've been oppressed for a long time. Maybe it's been really tough on you for a long time and you've just gone, I guess things will never change. Kind of where Barrack's at, right? Yeah, I know what God said, but I guess not for me. And you kind of have given up. This morning, you need a faith of a mom who long ago said, didn't God say this is the way it really was? Why aren't we doing it? Now, for some of you, that may mean that for the first time in your life, you have to say, oh, you mean there's someone else I can lean on and not myself? And it may be the first time where you say, wow, I need Jesus Christ to change my life and I need to follow his lead. And maybe you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior and this is the moment where you got to go, I believe I can't do this on my own. I need him. I can't fix anything in my life. I'm a broken person and I'm messed up and I have things in my life that I've tried to make right and I've tried to live life my own way and it's not happening. And this morning, you just need to say, all right, I give it to him. I'm just going to follow what he says. You know, it's a great irony of life that we think that we know better, and then we keep doing things, and they don't work out, and then we still say we know better. This morning, let's quit saying that. And let's just say he knows better. Let's just do what he says. And for some of you that may be coming to Christ for the first time and saying yes to him and saying, I need to become a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I need to be one. But for some of you, that may be uh, the fact that you say, no, I really do believe. I do believe in Christ. And even when it's kind of not showing in my life the way it's supposed to, and I need to just say Man, it is all yours, God, and I've tried to kind of take some stuff back, and I just got to, again, push it all back to you, and even though I believe, I got I to gotta live consistently with that belief. Maybe that's where you are this morning. But whatever it is you need, know this. That a life where you're trying to do it on your own, in your own strength, or in a life that just gives up and says, I guess things will never change. These are not the ways that God would have us approach him. They're just not. And boy, it's nice to find a mother in Israel to remind us of that fact. Bow your heads for a minute. We're going to pray, and we're going to have a time of invitation. That's a time for you to respond to God this morning. If you need to say yes to Jesus, I just want to invite you for the first time where you sit right now to say, all right, take, take control. I, I don't even know exactly what that means. I don't understand everything, but I know enough to know I can't do it on my own and I need you. I know enough to know that I'm a sinner and that I've gone against you and I've done my own thing. And this morning, I just need to say yes to you. Do that this morning if you've never done that. 
And if you've done that and you go, well, here's the thing, I still have these doubts. And as a result of these doubts, I'm not doing what God says. And as a result, life really isn't great. And so I'm kind of stuck. And this morning, it's time to get unstuck and say, okay, God, I believe what you say, and I'm going to do what you want me to do. And if I don't know what that is, I'm going to find out in my situation what it means to believe what you say and do what you want me to do and be that person. This morning, I challenge you all to respond to God. Uh, I'll be down here at the front, be happy to pray with you. Uh, the altar is open. You can come and just just come right down here and, and get before God. Or you can stand right where you're going to stand in a minute. It doesn't matter where you are. It matters the condition of your heart and what you're doing as you respond to God. Let his spirit speak to you this morning. I'm uh, going to pray, and then we'll have that time. Father, right now, God, we ask for a, a, a renewed faith, a renewed passion to follow in this thing called faith. And God, let us believe you because we know that that's the way to righteousness. That's the way to being the, the right person before you. So let's believe you in every way and in everything you got going on. And let us not fall victim to looking around at this world and thinking they know better or to even looking at ourselves and thinking, hey, I got this. But instead, God, let us look to you for your glory and your honor. Be with us right now. Speak to us through your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand and join with us. thing that Stan's going to talk about, just stealing the thunder, you know, that's what I do. Stop it. I can't. I can't help myself. Okay. <laughs> Come eat with us next Sunday after the service. It's youth fundraising barbecue. It's going to be brisket, so see, it's good, and you just got to come and eat with us and spend time with us. Uh, there is no price on it. You just give what God lays on your heart to give for uh, the youth to... Uh, get some money for camp and for uh, mission trip stuff. And, and so come eat with us. Just make that commitment. Take that step and go, all right, I'll, I'll be around these people a little bit more. <laughs> uh, well, we are planning right now and we're hoping to go to Portland, Oregon to work with the church planner there, a guy who came from Houston to go work uh, in Portland, Oregon. We're looking to do that at the end of July. Be praying for that and uh, be looking because we're probably going to do some fundraising for that too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. The internet said that $13.7 billion was going to be spent on Mother's Day. Awesome ladies. Probably $20 spent on Father's Day. But don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Rock tonight at 5 o'clock. You dive to discipleship at 5 o'clock. Ladies Bible study, Mission Snow, uh, 7 o'clock Monday. Men's Bible study, 7 o'clock. Ladies Bunko Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday night, we're having meatloaf. Not the band, but real live meatloaf. Potatoes, green beans, dessert. Adult Bible study, youth Bible study, team kids, and...
Flyer practice. practice. Thank yes. you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, food pantry Saturday. Uh, upcoming events, the fundraiser. If you can help us, I just found out this morning they can't find briskets. So they may cook squirrel and rabbit and whatever. But uh, if you can help us buy a brisket, please do. Uh, senior recognition on the 22nd, Deacon's meeting 22nd. Also, there's a deal in your bulletin about <clears throat> Vacation Bible School. If you'd like to help in any way, in any form or fashion, sign that up and get that to Pam, okay? Guys, have a good week. Love y'all. Awesome. Stand out and let's sing about our awesome God to sing us out this morning. Thank you.